So what what would you say the hardest part about prison was for you? That, right, you're going to find this a bit strange, right? Remember I told you, I says, uh, the first five years yeah. was uh, was me struggling, trying to adopt it. Well, that, this is this is one of the hardest parts and this should have been the easiest. I get moved up to Shots for my last year and Shots is, it's it, it, HMP Shots, it's in Scotland. It's just outside the Glasgow and I get moved up there for my last year and uh, I got parole the second time. And uh, the night before I got out, I was walking up and doing my cell and I says, I don't want to get out. Because I went, what am I going to do? I've been looked after for 10 years. I've had all my foods. I've no need to worry about a mortgage or, or money. I says, and I'm 40 years of age now. I've been in 10 and a half years. I don't want to go in street get into crime but for me personally I was never showed any rehabilitation and that's what prison's all about and they wouldn't get away with it in this day and age and uh, this was 2000, 2000 2001 I was getting released prisoners nowadays if they're doing a 15 year sentence they'll do 5 years and they'll go to an open prison and they'll get to work with the community and all that so I never go to that so I never knew anything else so I was that, that, that night and I, and I, and I do find it strange because I was always saying for years oh I can't wait to go out can't wait to time dragging that then it came to the, the D-Day and uh, I, I, I didn't I didn't want it out but another, another bad bit was uh, I got accused remember I told you earlier on in the story I says uh, my Mrs Sheila she says uh, don't slash a prison off her. I'll wait for you for 10 years well I was drinking with the IRA one night. I was in Phil Sutton. It was just after the five years mark. And uh, I went on the, the jail phone. And I, was, I was hitting it and all that. And I went back and she says, what's wrong? I went, I could not know. I was just arguing. So I woke up in the morning and I, and I went to myself, uh, what, what did she say to me, that phone? <laughs> so I phoned her up. You could use the jail phone. I was in the cleaner. So you could use it in the morning. I went, my wee card. And I phoned her and she says, what are you doing phoning? And I says, what are you on about? She says, did I not make it plain last night that we're over? And I went, what? <laughs> so, to, to, to be truthful, I, I was hurted. And, uh, cause see, see, when you're in prison, with my perception anyway, Sheila... There's only she's coming up to visit me, and there's only one person in your life. And at that time, Sean, I was I was a bit gutted, and I used to say to my pals, they were like social workers, thinking me coming round, and I'm going, oh, Sheila's left and all that. And I used to say, to them, if Cindy Crawford came through that door, I would tell her to fuck off. I only want Sheila. But it took me about six months to get over that. But something else happened, and it nearly it nearly. Uh, it nearly, it nearly messed my parole up. When I went up to Scotland after the nine year mark, I'd, I was waiting my second parole interview and I was only in Shots Prison a matter of, I went there January 2001. Two months, five weeks, two months. I came back, I was playing badminton, but this time I was fucking cracking at badminton. I just, I couldn't, <laughs> when I first went in, I was like that, ah, trying to put it over the net. Hmm. But after five or six years, I was a Scottish international. Run, except from the boy Mickey for Preston used to beat me. But uh, anyway, I've come back for playing badminton. I've done about ten years, and the way it would have worked to it, I'd have been out in four or five months if I was getting this pro. There's a good chance I was getting that. So two wee guys ran out for Govan. And I was sweating and all that, and they went. By the way, you're in the the front of the Daily Record, and to explain the Daily Records. Is the main Scottish paper up there, and I was in the front of it, and it says something like fifty. This guy, my my, my ex had took up with this millionaire, and uh, it says I'd put a fifty thousand pit on, fifty thousand hit on him for my prison cell, and uh, and it says says run away. There's a big. He he was he was worth. He was worth about uh, six million or something, ten million, and it says ten million. And uh, then it's where was it? 
and there's a front there's a front bit yeah. Yeah, so Ian, Ian's brought uh, there's a mountain of paperwork uh, there's and a, scrapbooks of all of his newspaper uh, articles there's a, there's a thing I think it's I think it's in the, the other one it's in this was me supposed to put a £50,000 hat and inside there's a just kidding. that was a photo of me and I remember that was me in uh, Lanzarote in 1989 Take you in the gangs to the mall and uh, the story was they, they were taking loads of cocaine at the time and the uh, story was that when I moved up to Scotland I think Sheila was saying look when Ian gets what he's going to do you in but it was nothing to do with me so the paper the front of it was saying the front of it was saying that this hat it says there's a £50,000 thing with hat on it uh, on him and says I've done it for myself so my mother and sister come up to see me a few days later he says, don't think you sold £50,000. I says, I've not got 50 pence. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that caused me a lot of hassle. And that, that, that story came out on a Saturday. I think it was February or March 2001. And uh, as I say, I came back for the gym and that. But seeing the Monday when I went to work, I was walking up and down the workshop and uh, the governor came in and he went, Phew. he says, we saw that story about I says, I, I don't know. He says, is that you up to your old games? I says, I've been in 10 years. I says, I can put in four or five one for you. I says, it's nothing to do with me. He went, Pfft. And I went, fuck, you know. That, that was the first thing that had been in the paper in 10 years with this millionaire guy. So I found out later, but when I'd been released, what, what it was all about, they were taking too much cocaine at the time and uh, I was at a party and two girls says to us listen they says do you know why this Pat Sweeney story thing came about I says no I says we're taking cocaine and all that and she when you come up to Scotland says look when he comes up he knows all the IRA and the London gangsters you're going to get done in so you ran to the paper and says I had a £50,000 hit on him so I did and I was like oh, fucking hell but uh, eventually got parole, so I did. And, what year uh, did you get parole? I got parole in 2001, I got out in November. I'd done 10 years, five months, five days and five minutes. <laughs> and uh, my mother was there waiting on us. I needed a big limo and all that, so they did. So after going through this prison experience, Ian, did you take it easy then when you got out? No, well, I decided when I, when I get out, I says to myself, well, I'm a failed bank robber. I says, I'm not going to try anything uh, anything too soon, too quick again. But because uh, I never had any re rehabilitation and I only knew what best to do was robbing or whatever. So when I came out, after two days when I got out, I went to this nightclub in Glasgow, Victoria's, and uh, I became a permanent figure there. I was in there about nine months. And... Uh, I was taking loads of ec ekis. Ecstasy. Yeah, ecstasy and just, I was only, I was 40 and I thought I was 30 years of age again. And uh, I used to keep everybody in after hours in this nightclub, Victoria's. And people used to come up and say, do you own this place and all that? And I was like, oh, pff, no, but it was as if I did own it. But uh, what happened was the guy had, I think he got sick of me. And he ended up selling it to a company in Newcastle called Vimac for six million. And uh, I went up to the door, and the guy says, "We know who you are, Ian." Blah 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 blah. There'll be any more lock-ins or whatever. So after about a second week, uh, the bouncers asked us to leave, and me and Gary just knocked fuck out about four of them. And uh, so a few months after that. My, the, the social worker I had at the time now you see a social worker you're on probation and all, you're out in licence and things my social worker was a little bastard so he was he fucking ran my life I was 40 years of age and he was 32 mm -hmm. and uh, things I had to report to him and things I had to report to him if I wanted to move to a new house or 
anything else I did everything everything was channeled through him so I says to him one day listen I says uh, I was only a few months I says uh, I've got a, a a house I want you to see I'm, I'm thinking of moving into it so I told him the address in it and uh, little did he know it was a four bedroom detached house <laughs> and he's, he's he's come up to see this house and I'm going he's not saying nothing and I'm busy getting round the house and I'm going what do you think of this and it's got a double garage and barbecue I says but the best bit about this is for me at the big giant living room I says that's where the parties will be after Victoria's after the Ickies so once we've done the tour of the house I says to him oh, what did you think no that he went where are you going to get the money I says well I had a house before I went to prison I says I've still got money friends have gave us money they went, nah, you're not having a better house than me. I looked at him and I went, did I hear him right? And he went, and he went, do you want to run down the road this time? And I went, no, I went, fuck all, run down the road. So he became a thorn in my side and my, my son had moved to Spain with my ex and uh, asked to go to see him. And when I was out about a year and I got permission, I went there. Then in uh, that was 2002, November 2002, I'd been out exactly a year then. <clears throat> then in February 2003, the cops, I was away at a gym, and the cops, uh, I was seeing some girl, can't tell up at the time, the cops were up at her door, they were up at my brother Gary's door, they went to my mum's door, and I was walking up a busy street in... Uh, the West End of Glasgow, Byers Road. I'd just been to Kelvin Hall Gym. My brother phoned us and he says, by the way, he says, you're getting recalled back to prison. I says, how do you know that? He says, there's been coppers up here with guns and all that. And they've been to your girlfriends and my ma's. And uh, he says, look, uh, thing me, there's a police intelligence report that's been submitted to, I was still governed by London by then. And uh, so I, I was on the run was was the only run I just I wasn't handing myself in then I went to see my lawyer and I decided after five days right I'm not going to go to a police station I got up to Shorts Prison where I was released for and I went up and I chapped the door and the guy was like oh, he went what are you want?" he says I thought you were on the run I says I'm not on the run I says uh, I want. he says I'll get the governor on that for you and uh the governor came down, her name, it was a, it was a woman governor, he shot saying her name was Audrey Park. And she says, are you not on the run or that? I says, no, I'm not on the run. I says, I've done nothing wrong. She says, it says in the paper that you you went to Spain. <laughs> uh, it was in the front of this, this record, it says I was away in Spain, I stuck my fingers up to the law and all that. Mm -hmm. And she says to me, you've got a lovely suntan. I says, it's for a sun, sunset beach. Uh, no sunset, I says, it's for a sunset. Uh, Sun Beach shop in Glasgow and uh, she went like that she says what, what do you want me to do as a bit of that well, thing me, I handed my cell in she says uh, what, what is it you want me to do she says because I'm not going to phone the police which was good there she could have just phoned the police and says he's here and uh, I says I want you to take me back in I says I'm getting recalled and I, and I get let out of here and uh, she says to me, I can't do that, I've no paperwork. And I kind of begged her, I says, look, I says, go and just take me in and And she says, right, she says, if I take you in here, she says, don't be going your bell to get out of here. I says, no bother. So I was in my cell about an hour and I was already press the bell. <laughs> says, have I done the right thing? So the next morning she came up to see me with the thing me, an assistant governor and another prison officer. She says, oh, you've caused me a lot of hassle. I says, how? She says, see when, uh, she says, uh, see when you get locked, I think I'm handing my cell in about seven o'clock. She says, I get shouted back down at the gate again. A serious crime squad were there. They says, we know you've got Ian McDonald back in prison. It says, uh, you're holding him illegally. You better go and get him and get him out. She says, Ian's sleeping. <laughs> Which I thought, this is what? She says, I, I says, you were sleeping. She says, he's gone nowhere. 
I says, thanks, Audrey. I says, uh, see when I get out. I says, I'll take you out for a night out. And she went, I don't think so. <laughs> and uh, she says, right, she says, your paperwork should be faxed through this morning. And she left me up in this uh, NIC. Uh, it was just an induction unit, play something shots. So I was in for, uh, kept me in for 14 months. Someday for the pro board, I, I could have been in for another five years. Somebody for the pro board came up for England and they interviewed me and the guy says, I don't even know why you're in. He says, this mm. is pure crap. The intelligence report says that I met somebody, there were six different things. It says that I'd met somebody in Socky Hill Street and uh, discussed about getting somebody done in. It was cool. Mm. And uh, a lot of crap. My lawyers came up the following week and they says, see the guy that they're mentioning? They're saying the guy's staying seven years in command at prison. And uh, so he must have come out of cell bars and early on come up and met me and went back in. So that was dismissed. But see, when I told you, I, me and Gary in uh, Victoria's nightclub, we, we, we battered the four bouncers. I, get, I went to court while I was in uh, the recall. I was only a month or two. And uh, they dropped, they wouldn't have dropped all the charges against me. They dropped the assaults against me mm. and uh, Gary pled guilty to two assaults, got a £500 fine and I got a 30 days imprisonment and the judge says to me, you should know better. So automatically that triggered my thing, my licence recall. I went back to Shorts and uh, I got a letter. We'd done representations, me and I, a woman lawyer, Vicky King for London. I was in touch with her. We'd done representations for to try and get back out after six months. And they says to us, look, the police intelligence report, they says, we can't rely on that because uh, this guy was in jail through the says I'd met. They says, but you have breached your, your license conditions. We, uh, pleading guilty to a breach of the peace in this nightclub. So it says license revoked. So I went up in another six or seven months. I was in 14 months. So I got out in April Fool's Day 2004 and I had summed up my life and I says to myself, right, okay then, you've done 10 and a half years for a field bank robbery. You've been put back in for a year for enjoying yourself. Uh, so I'm coming out April Fool's Day and I'm no fooling about. 